Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I just finished watching episode 8 from season 4 of Outlander. And as you can see from the title of this episode, I'm going to go ahead and watch episode 9 as well. And the way episode 8 ended, it didn't end very happy. It ended with a very traumatic, very, very brutal situation with Stephen Bonnet, the new villain, I guess, of the series kind of taking over for Blackjack Randall. And of course it ended with the, with him raping Brianna. Very brutal way of coming into this century, although she's been here now for a little while. And of course she just became, uh, I don't know if you, if you would consider it married. She just became handfast with Roger, which is essentially, if I understood it, your, your man and wife for a year and a day. So you have a year and a day to make it official. So it's an unofficial sort of marriage. And of course, Roger and Brianna had their wedding night immediately. And then Brianna found out that Roger, because Roger said something he probably didn't mean to say, Roger said, well, I don't remember what Roger said, but it, it, made Brianna know or understand, come to the understanding, that Roger knew about the obituary of Claire and Jamie before Brianna found out, and he never said anything to her. And, of course, this coming out led to a big argument, a big fight between the two of them, and he basically said that he may as well go back to the 20th century, or words to that effect. And she basically replied with, get lost. She didn't say it that way. She didn't say those words. But that were those were the words that Roger heard in his mind, I'm sure. Because she didn't, she didn't say, I want you to stay. And Roger, of course, like I said at the end of the previous video, Roger should have basically fallen on his sword and begged her forgiveness and said he was sorry, but he didn't. His pride, I guess, didn't allow him to do that. And because of that, or not because of that, but after that, after Roger left, that led Brianna back to, I guess it's a, a bar or a boarding house or something, wherever it is she was staying. And that was where she ran across Stephen Bonnet, who had Claire's ring. And that led to the... the brutal way that the episode ended with her being sexually assaulted and like I said on the previous video I think that's about the only thing about the series I don't like and that's that they've had at least a couple if not a few instances of sexual violence and I know they do it for the dramatic reasons but I don't like it. I, I don't care for that. I don't, I just don't like it. And I'm sure there's not very many fans of the show that do. Maybe it's seen as necessary. Maybe it's not, not necessarily seen as necessary, but maybe it's seen as part of the story. But it's a part of the story that I don't like. Now, in the, the rest of that episode, we had a bit of a reunion between Fergus and Murta, I hadn't even thought about that, that, that Fergus had not seen him yet. And Murta didn't even, I guess, didn't even realize that Fergus was there. And they had a bit of a relationship when they were in season two, when they were in France. And then when they got back to Scotland, they had, they had a, a, a good relationship with each other. So you could see Murta was very happy to see Fergus. And, of course, Fergus brought word that they were basically walking into a trap. And that saved not only Murta but his men from being captured and arrested. And, of course, we got to see George Washington, George and Martha Washington, at the theater. Of course, this is North Carolina, whereas, thinking about where they are, they're near Wilmington, or maybe they're in Wilmington. That's pretty far from where Mount Vernon is. So, George Washington is in this era is pretty far from home, not quite as far as from there to Scotland, 
but he is probably see Wilmington to Mount Vernon. That could be about 400 miles, 450 miles. And that's just a guess from here to Mount Vernon, where I live, which is in Hampton roads, that would be 250 miles, maybe. Yeah. 250, 260 miles thereabouts. So probably 400, 450 miles to Wilmington. So George Washington is quite far from home for that era, going by carriage. I can't imagine that would take any less than about a week to to travel, and that's uh, assuming the weather is good. So that was fun. That was fun to get to see and meet George Washington here on Outlander. Hopefully we'll see him again. And maybe some of the other founding fathers. Thomas Jefferson would be a fun one to see. Now for this episode, I expect we're going to pick up where we left off with Brianna. She has had this traumatic incident. The incident doesn't sound right either. She's had this traumatic thing happen to her, this assault. So I'm curious to see how she's going to deal with that and just what's going to happen. Now, if you're interested in watching my full-length reaction to this or anything else that I've been watching, you can head over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash 31 Mike, and I'll leave a link to that down below in the description of this video. Now let's go ahead and jump into the episode and see where we are. Oh, the birds and the bees. Bleeding. You've been gone a while. Were you with that man? Yes. Well, she's gonna think Roger did that since she said yes. Did he hurt you? See, she's talking about Roger. Well, Roger's still there. Do you know where I might find the young woman who was with yesterday? I haven't seen her this morning. Must be up in the chamber still. Ben's right. Oh. Captain. Sit down. Please. Hungry? Not really. Shame. For departing. <laughs> I appreciate that, Captain, but I intend to stay here. Hmm. So all was well with your ass then. I told you to be sure she was worth it. Huh? Mm. Captain knows best. Indeed he does. Especially when it comes to women. <laughs> but your ass will have to wait for now, sailor. Hmm. Because you'll be coming with us to Philadelphia. But he signed on to be a member of the crew. One of our ports on the way. My men do as they please when they're ashore. But if they are not aboard when the time comes to set sail, they often find themselves missing more than their wages. I'd sooner see you lose a last than a limb. Yeah. You'll be paid once the cargo's unloaded in Philadelphia. After that, where you go and what you do is your own business. He seems like he's pretty well stuck here. Limb or lass, Mr. McKenzie. Well, he wants to make his way back to Scotland anyway. 
other young women I was here. Well, maybe not, because he was there looking for Brianna. The man who was here with me yesterday, the Scottish man, did he return? Oh, he was here this morning. He asked after you, and then he left with a crew of the Gloriana. Do you know where they went? To the ship. Philadelphia. Left in the morning hmm. So, so he's long gone now. Of course, she doesn't know he was forced to leave. She's probably thinking he left on his of his own accord. So you shouldn't be running. It isn't ladylike, remember? You'll be glad that I'm no lady when you hear what I'm to tell you next. While securing our positions, I spoke to a gentleman in the street. Had the look of a Scotsman about him. So marched right up to him, I did. We well, got to talking of this and that, and of all the Scots in North Carolina, and how some of them are doing very well for themselves. I suppose you're going to tell me about each and every one? Well, not all of them. Those who make a show of themselves, certainly. Is he? what are you talking about? At the theater, the play was brought to a halt when the wife of the Scotsman hmm. acted as a surgeon and cut the man open. It could only be Claire. <laughs> Sounds like Mom. He assured me that the husband was of good Scottish stock. A Mr. Fraser. <laughs> They're here? He said Mr. Fraser's over by McCabe's now. Well, she doesn't know him. She has no idea what he, he looks he like. Aye, he was here. He uh, went around the back. Thank you. Oh, there she is. <laughs> and he's in the alley relieving himself. <laughs> you want to hear, Lassie? You. I'm sorry, Lass. I'm a married man. <laughs> I meant it. I have a wife. Are you... You're Jamie Fraser, aren't you? Hmm. I am. Who asks? Hmm. His daughter. Do you have a message for me, Lassie? Hmm. Brianna. Hmm. Well, he had seen pictures of her. He just didn't recognize her. Of course, this is going to be quite a shock for Claire. Christ. She'll be mad with joy. <laughs> yeah. Just wait till she sees her. There, there, there they are. <laughs>
That was cool. I like that. That was cool the way they met. I knew you'd found each other, and I was just curious to know more about your life together. I came across that old newspaper with your names in it, but I, I didn't expect to see you. I traveled from Scotland with a young woman, Lizzie. It's a long story, but well, she's indebted to me, and I'm indebted to her. She's welcome to join us. Uncle Jamie! I've seen to it that the belongings and the casks mm. are on the Sally Ann. Ian. Captain Freeman says, I'm pardon that they can your company. She's Rihanna, your cousin. Yeah, they're cousins. And there's a surprise, but we'll explain so. <laughs> of course, Brienne is going to see a whole different side of her mother here because now Claire is kind of in her element here. So handsome. <laughs> oh, his name's Rolo. Yeah, she wasn't talking about You're Rolo. Yeah, see how she's looking at him? <laughs> You're in love with him. Yes. You ran fast. We got into this huge fight. And now he's headed to Scotland. I'm back through the stones. He's threatened too, and I told him to go ahead. But I didn't need him here. I should have gone after him. Sailed away this morning. It's my fault. Hmm. See, she doesn't know that he was forced to go. I didn't notice. Is Claire still wearing the gold band? First time we made this journey, we were robbed. Worst of it is. It's the Uncle Jamie had helped this criminal to regain his liberty. I'm sure he was only trying to do the right thing. Couldn't have foreseen it. This man, Stephen Bonnet. Does she know his name? He fooled us all. He slit our friend Leslie's throat. Right in front of Auntie Claire. Stole our wedding ring too. Now she knows who he is. Uncle Jamie's never forgiven himself. I can see it so clearly in my mind. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't wish to scare you. If Jamie hadn't helped him to escape, maybe turned him in, none of this would have happened. Did you hear more last night? I just can't believe this. It's Roger left her alone. Hopefully once we reach home, she'll tell me the full story. I don't need her to see she's It certainly is disconcerting. Yeah, to say the least. We could make sure we're never in the cabin the Sunday before January 21st. Every year for a decade. You do what you gotta do. I don't believe it'll be as simple as that. I haven't had much luck changing history in the past, Claire. <laughs> That's true. But you know the day that you're going to die and where... Just don't be there. And if you have to be there, stay outside. Don't go in the house. Wow. Hmm. Their favorite spot. Reminds me of Daniel Boone. The man you get from your thing. Hmm. I don't know him. Yeah, then. No, he's... He's probably alive right alive now. He's alive now. Yeah. Daniel Boone's a frontiersman. I like for lands for the west over those mountains. I'll name towns after him. Sorry, I, I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> He's used to it. <laughs> I was just thinking that. He's used to it from Claire. Uh -huh. 
Mertha gets to meet Jamie's daughter. The lad's done well for himself, bringing back two lessies. <laughs> this is Brianna, my daughter. Brianna, this is my godfather, Murta. Hey. What took you so long, lass? <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Claire says you visited Lallybroch. So you met my ma and dad then? Just your father. Your mother was away home. <laughs> the seas. In that way since she was our last. <laughs> what was Jamie like as a boy? Oh, no. oh, I must uh, clear away the cobwebs if you remember anything from that time. There was a time when we Jamie was sent off to foster with his uncle Diggle. Oh, Christ. Mm, he was around 14 or so. Diggle had four daughters and Tabitha was the first girl that Jamie ever kissed. Right. She was the first girl to ever kiss me. <laughs> yeah. A memorable first experience. And my mother called us. Don't talk about it. <laughs> so the next morning, Jamie wakes up to find Dougal standing over him. They had a very pleasant conversation. <laughs> Dougal says that he would hate to think that his nephew could take advantage of his daughter's feelings. <laughs> that doesn't sound so bad. Aye. But the whole time that Diggle was talking, he had one hand on his dirk and the other one resting on Jamie's box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't look at the lass again until I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Dougal. <laughs> Dougal wasn't always a good guy, but I liked the character. I miss Dougal being in the show. Never guess who I met. Um, George? <laughs> <laughs> Close. Amazing. I'd love to hear more about it, but I, uh, I'm exhausted. If you'll excuse hmm. me, I'm going to go to bed. Not Good the night. reaction that she was expecting to oh, get. Darling, I'll, uh, I'll walk you to the shelter. That last reminds me of your mother. See my eyes. And she's here. <laughs> You've suffered enough pain in your life. I'm glad for your lad. Time, but I remembered it recently when I found it again myself. He knew you came back to Jamie. And that could explain a bit of why he became so distant from her. He always knew my heart was here. I can see it too. I see why you had to come back to Jamie. Hmm. I guess they're in Philadelphia. Very wisely. Next. Back to Caroline, if you have it. As soon as I can make my way aboard another ship. You have done it. I have heroes. Forgive me, Captain, but I wondered if I might have one or two of those small gems instead of coin as wages. Hmm. Huh. He needs the one to go, to go back through. Hmm. Smaller ones, perhaps. You're all supposed to be a difficult lord to serve. Well, where's a lassie? Hmm. Next. Hmm. A little target practice. I haven't been to the range in a couple of years now, since the pandemic. <laughs> Good shot. In God's name, did you learn to shoot like that? My father? Hmm. Frank. Frank. I can his name. Your mother told me about him. Yeah. He and I would camp out and taught me to shoot. That's all. Hmm. Bit of an awkward conversation. Uh, far cry from the still cellar at Leoch. It does make whiskey, though, of a sort. <laughs> so does everyone always call you young, Ian? 
When I was a bairn, it was we Ian. <laughs> we Ian. Everyone always just calls me Bree. Is that what you call her when you shorten her name? Nah. <laughs> Something wrong with Bree? I have a feeling it does. A brie means a disturbance. Yeah. <laughs> Among other things. We could have told her that. And perhaps you should take her hunting with you. Or take her mind off Roger and you'd have some time to spend together alone. Now Lizzie's gonna wake up and Brianna's gone. So, what are we hunting? Bees. Bees? How do you hunt bees? Well, the, the episode title was Birds and Bees. Bird, the birds and the bees. So, it's good to spend time with you. Brianna. Mansach. You call me that before. My blessing. Well, if Leary had put any doubt in her mind as to whether Jamie wanted her, I think that doubt would be gone by now. Hummingbirds like to drink from the long throated flowers. And bees want to get inside. And they like the, the broad, flat flowers. And bees. <laughs> and they lighten them and wallow till they're all covered all in yellow. Oh, there's one. See which direction they go. Hmm. Yeah, following a bee could be difficult. That's good. Sometimes they hide among the rocks and there's little you can do. Oh. It's best to wait until dark. Well, then all the swarm will be inside the hive. And once we return home, you'll see. We'll place it in a Bee gum, and come in the morning, the bees will venture out looking around for the nearest flowers. Don't they realize they aren't in the proper place? What do they do about it? There's no means to find their way back, and no hole left here to come back to. Now they'll be content in their new home. Hmm. He's talking about her. They have a home. I don't know which to replace your father. He was a good man. I feel disloyal to him even being here with you. I'm grateful to him. He raised you for your mother's sake, a child of another man. A man he had no cause to love. He stood by you both. And he loved you. Even though he did not see himself in you. I had to give you to him. Oh, I can't see him. Sorry, you came back to me. Sure, I'm not a brie. Yeah. Disturbance, huh? <laughs> Murder told me. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Aye, you are. As was your mother before you, but. <laughs> You're one of welcome. You're my flesh and blood. <laughs> well, he I calls Claire Sassenach. You can call me Da, if you like. Da. Is that Gaelic? No. Tony. Tony Simple. She belongs back in her time.
Well, but what does she want? Does she want to go back to the 20th century? She is a gift. For me to you. And you to me. <laughs> she called me Da. <laughs> well, there's the birds. We've seen the bees. Now we've seen the birds. From the episode title. Uh, my mother. I'll see you in a while. Yeah, she likes Ian. Is this going to be a love interest for Ian? Maybe a wife? How far along are you? No. Oh. About two months. Oh. Didn't do a Roger thing to use any precautions. I didn't think I needed to pack condoms, Mama. <laughs> you might not be Rogers. Oh, that's right. Bonnet. Who's? She going to tell her what happened? Um, there was this man started talking and 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 then I didn't fight him. I didn't fight him hard enough. Why the hell did he fight him? Oh my god. Oh god. Well, is she going to tell her that it was Bonnet? What? Well, if he finds out it was Bonnet, he's going to go get Bonnet and kill him. She was raped. In Wilmington. Right after Roger left. She just told me today. Oh, is he making his way up to Fraser's Ridge? She thinks Roger's the one that raped her. The raped Brianna. She sees her ring. Uncle Jamie. Ian? Is he? What's wrong? She saw a man that put a fright into her uncle. Near the road, sir. She came to him. See, I I knew when she misread that situation, that was good. She she thought Roger was the one that did it. On their petticoats, and I could smell him on her. His seat. She was a virgin when he took her. I am her maid, sir. I knew that that was going to come into play at some point. That she saw that interaction between Brianna and Roger and misunderstood it. Oh, I she's got the ring. This. Brianna, tell me. Stephen Bonnet. He's the man who 
I saw him with your ring, and I offered to buy it from him. That's when it happened. Why did you not tell me this? I couldn't. Ian told me about what happened on the river. And I knew that you would feel awful for what happened to me because of the ring and that Jamie would blame himself because he helped Bonnet escape. If he knows, he'll try to find Bonnet. Yeah. And I can't let him do that. You've met the man, Mommy. You know what he's like. You have to promise me to keep this to yourself. <laughs> promise. No. Oh. Could you tell me if Fraser's right just near? Ah. Oh, this is gonna go bad for Roger. Oh, he could kill him. Wow, he beat him bloody. Get rid of him. Should I kill him? No, no, I won't make a murder of you. Not that he doesn't deserve it. What do you want me to do with him? I don't care. Just get him out of my seat. Wow. Wow. <laughs> he beat him bloody. And thinking that he was the one that attacked Brianna, I completely understand why he did it. And Roger's lucky that he was stopped because he would have wound up killing him. Wow. And of course, it wasn't Roger. It was Stephen Bonnet. What's Jamie going to do? What's Jamie going to say? What's Jamie going to think when he finds out, if he finds out, that it was Bonnet that did this and not Roger. That that was Roger. Because he doesn't even know that Roger is in the area. And it's essentially his son-in-law that he just beat to a pulp. Wow. Oh, well, they have a way of shocking you with some of the violence, don't they? And of course, this is all because Lizzie misunderstood the interaction between Brianna and Roger that day that they first met, or not first met, but first saw each other here in Wilmington. And she just assumed that it was Roger. In fact, she asked Brianna if it was the man that she was with, and or if she had been with that man that she was with. And she said yes, and that confirmed to Lizzie that that was the man that did those things to her, that made her bruised and battered so now what's going to happen to roger it's going to be interesting to see this play out now so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you have any comments please leave them down below and if you're not already a subscriber please go ahead and subscribe thanks for watching and i will see you on episode number 10